Good morning from the garden. My name is Robin. I garden in Zone 6 in Northwest Connecticut. Uh, if this is your first time uh, joining me, thank you so much. Um, if you're a regular subscriber, uh, even more thank you. Um, I really appreciate the support. It really makes a difference. Please tell me the things you're interested in my talking about because um, I'm trying to decide um, should I stay with YouTube? Um, do you guys really love the information that you get? Or are you basically only watching, you know, one or two other channels and, you know, you come here once in a blue moon. So what I wanted to talk about today, something I did talk about last year, is winter interest. I live in Connecticut, in the Northwest area. Um, we get a lot, well, I should say we, we typically get a lot of snow. Um, we didn't get snow last year. That's not good for plants, if, number one, because uh, we, then we don't have water, you know, in the following summer. But so since we are looking out at our garden from, you know, like the kitchen window or wherever, um, for a good part of the year here, we want winter interest. We want structure and things in our garden to look at. I have been pulling out some perennials. I know. Oh, my God. Um, but you know what? H has kind of taught me that I don't want to work this hard. Um, I have a very large garden. It's over an acre. It's well planted. Um, and I don't want things that need a lot of maintenance. So I'm trying to pull out things and replace them with evergreens. And, um, or trees, things that don't require my intervention on a regular basis. So before I start talking, I'm, I'm gonna walk around and I'm gonna go bed by bed. Uh, I don't know if this video will end up being so long that I'll have to break it into two parts. Um, however, um, I'm d trying to decide whether I should give you guys like all the information on each plant or should I just tell you uh, what it is? So I'll, I'll have to decide. I actually have with me literally my lists. I keep sheets on every single thing that I plant on top of an Excel sheet and all that stuff. Um, so I have, you know, all the details when somebody asks me because I, I can't remember the zone of every single plant or exactly how big something is supposed to get. Um, so I'll, if you want that kind of information all the time, please let me know. So let's, let's just start. And I want to start somewhere different right now. So I don't know. I'm a big fan of Monty Don, um, on BBC Gardener's World. And I'm sure a lot of you are also. And some of the things that he has said recently really have resonated with me. Uh, one, and I do this anyway, because I have books, I have garden journals. I write stuff in them every day. What did I do? What's blooming? What's not doing well? So you want to be making notes now while things are growing so you can clearly see what you maybe want to make changes um, now or next spring. Um, so it's a great time to do that. Uh, it's fall is a great time to plant. The ground is still warm. There are many things you can still plant. Now here, it's been a pretty tough year um, for many really heat loving plants because we've had excessive rain and humidity here. But you can safely plant trees and evergreens now through the fall being mindful of whatever your first frost date is. They say this year that ours is October 12th. Um, I'd say that's a light frost. I, I, I'm not even usually planting my spring bulbs until uh, early November. Um, and so I'm probably also not even pulling my dahlias. Well, this year I'll probably pull my dahlias a little earlier because they're actually in pots. When they're in the ground, I probably don't because you really want the foliage to die back for a little while before you start pulling them up. You can, um, I wouldn't divide grasses now. Wait till the spring to do that. I also prefer not to um, divide my like still be hostas, daylilies. I usually do that stuff in the spring, you know, as it's first emerging. This way you're not hassling with, you know, cutting down, you know, all the uh, leaves. And I just feel like it's a lot more work now, but whatever. So we want to try and achieve diversity and a certain amount of chaos and self-seeding is okay. Um, but stay vigilant. Don't uh, compost diseased plants. Um, I don't compost, period. 
because um, I just don't have a place for it. I don't have a place that gets enough sun that's not literally right in the middle of the garden, so I can't do that. Um, but, you know, don't get discouraged because there's always going to be problems. Um, and you just have to deal with them as a gardener. Um, and also, don't be so committed to one thing. Things change. Last This year, I showed you my catalpa tree that I absolutely loved. One time, a huge branch came down. A couple weeks later, another huge branch came down. I have no choice. I have to replace that. Um, so I have a, a really beautiful stewardia that I picked out that is going in probably the end of October. Um, but it's a really good time to plant um, evergreens and trees. Um, and I've been adding a lot of new ones this year. So uh, remember, if you are overwintering any shrubs um, or plants um, in your containers, you want to be... Um, have plants that are two zones below your zone. So for me, that would be a plant that's hardy down to zone four. Now I have some roses that are hardy down to zone four, um, but I have um, others that aren't. I'm going to see what maybe might work in my greenhouse this year. I'm not, not quite sure, really. Um, and in the fall, when you're planting, plants typically have a little bit of an easier transition. It's not super hot, um, you know, but if something is, if you're in a zone six, I wouldn't be planting things necessarily, well, perennials that are zone six. So don't plant things that are like marginally hardy um, in your zone. Um, if you haven't ordered your bulbs, order them quickly because they sell out really quick, especially the really popular varieties. Um, I have already, I long ago, ordered all my bulbs and things. Now I did a video and I'll try to remember to link it down below of what my plan was going to be to put in some of those uh, early season and understory basically um, bulbs that will come up like before the hostas and before the um, you know shrubs really start putting uh, leafing out. Um, and I will try to get another video together to show you what I actually ended up ordering. Um, you can shop now for fall flowering plants because you can see what they look like, you know, like sedums and mums and asters. And these are great for pollinators now. I am not a big annual mum person. I, let, I have perennial mums and perennial asters. Um, but, you know, that's totally up to you. They're great for decor, of course. Um, you can... Um, you do want to make sure that you're cleaning up around things like your roses, uh, especially I have black spot. It's been so wet this year. Um, they were doing good for a while. Make sure you clean up all that stuff because otherwise it'll, it'll just overwinter. Um, take notes, like I said, on what worked, what didn't work. Um, you know, is there, did you grow a tomato that you really didn't like? Um, what annuals didn't perform well for you? Make sure you keep pulling weeds add mulch. I'm, I, I am a big, big proponent of wood mulch. I do not like rock mulch. Um, it doesn't allow you to work in the beds. Uh, it does not prevent weeds. Um, it doesn't enrich the soil. It doesn't help hold in water for the plants. There are just so many reasons. Um, don't fertilize now because plants are in the process basically of, you know, sh shutting down and going to sleep. Um, so we're not going to want to encourage any extra growth. So when preparing to add more winter interest, take a look at each bed. And I've kind of done that myself to see how much of the bed is deciduous. How much is just going to, like perennials, die completely back to the ground? Do you at least have some shrubs for some, you know, branching structure or exfoliating bark, things like that? Um, start planning if you are going to you know, have to dig up, um, like dahlias. We, here we have to dig up dahlias. We have to dig up cannas. We have to dig up caladiums. We have to dig out, uh, elephant ears. We have to dig up oriental lilies. Um, so start planning. What are you going to do with those things? Mine typically go into the garage, um, in some vermiculite or whatever. Um, I'm pulling out, I just pulled out most all of my tomatoes, my broccoli, I still have potatoes and carrots going, um, but I'm getting ready to do another, I'm going to start planting garlic uh, probably probably in another month or so. Um, 
and I'm debating about cool flowers this year. I'm just, like I said, trying to decide oh, what do I want to do and what do I not want to do. <laughs> but fall is also a great time uh, for hardscaping projects. Um, you can kill the grass. I use that cardboard method all the time. Um, it works really good. Put down the cardboard now, throw some mulch on top of it, and come spring, your beds will be ready to plant. Um, and it's also important, pay attention to what plants have really handled our, I'm going to say, our new weather. <laughs> um, and in your area, um, you know, pay attention to that stuff. Do you go on garden tours, maybe garden conservancy tours, uh, botanic gardens, things like that? Um, see what's growing good in your neighbor's gardens. Um, and so with that said, um, I really want to talk about, like I said, pre start preparing now for winter interest. So if you haven't um, already, you might consider planting things like hellebores and early bulbs um, for win winter interest, things that actually bloom in the winter. Um, things that have peeling or exfoliating bark, evergreens and conifers. Um, but don't ignore just plant structures of trees and shrubs. Um, also hardscape like, you know, arbors and sculptures and stone walls and that kind of stuff. Um, so I thought what we would do, uh, like I said, is walk around to each of my beds and I'll point out to you what I think is winter interest in that bed. Um, and whether it's new or old also. So if something is brand new, I have one, uh, I, ha I have quite a few evergreens that I've just planted. So let's uh, get out there and go walk around. So this bed started out completely as my shade bed. It actually gets a fair amount of morning sun now. Um, and you can see right now there's still some sun here. So what do I have here for winter interest? I'd say branching structure and exfoliating bark. So along the back here, I have nine bark Diablo, um, and that has a beautiful exfoliating bark. Right now, of course, it's, it's gorgeous color. I have French Pussy Willow here um, that also Again, really pretty branching structure. It gets like 25 feet tall by 12 feet wide, zones four through eight. So this is a Salix capria. Um, I have a um, sort of behind, and I can't even get in there to tell you the honest truth. Um, I have a Hemimelis. Um, I'm not sure which variety. I think Jelena. Uh, those also get 12, uh, like 12 feet tall, 15 feet wide. It blooms though, January to March. Um, and it can handle clay soil zone five through nine, but it blooms in the winter time. So this bed, I can't even see this from my house. Um, the, sadly, the hemimelis used to be in a bed that I could see, but you know, things happen and we just moved it and we keep trying to hope it that it grows but the rest of this stuff are all perennials except for the hydrangeas and the hydrangeas of course will keep you know branching structure but they won't um, have any other interest in the winter so this is the first bed I just realized I forgot to mention I have an Ilex Steeds, but I have another one, so I'll talk about that a little more. And then the bench is out here all winter. So again, even though there's not a lot of winter interest right here, except for the branching on things um, right at this part of the bed, this is right next to that pine bed, um, I still have things to look at all winter, you know, besides obviously, you know, the gorgeous trees that are around. Now in this bed, which is one of my new beds that I started last year, of course. I have the pine, I have some cryptomerias, I have an Acer Grissium, um, and then I have uh, a Temple of Bloom, and then I have some new evergreens that I've put in. So first we have right here, just a, a standard Eastern white pine. They can get 50 to 80 feet tall, 20 to 40 feet wide, zones three through eight, um, definitely, good for winter interest, obviously. Next up, I have uh, cryptomerias. 
Um, this was supposed to be Nana. I don't know if it actually is. Zone five through seven, and I have two of them. There it is right there. And I have one on the other side of the bed also. Um, and I've got my notes here so I don't screw up telling you stuff. Um, it says it reaches two to three feet tall. These are obviously taller than that. So I think these were mismarked. Um, and, but they can get four to eight feet tall. Um, as they get older and stuff. And that's, you know, an evergreen, so really pretty with some snow cover on it. So right here, I have a paper bark maple, Acer Grissium, uh, zones five through nine, um, can get, uh, five through eight, sorry, can get 25 feet tall, 15 to 20 feet wide. Gorgeous, gorgeous bark. <laughs> um, it's like a cinnamon ex color and it's exfoliating absolutely gorgeous all year long now I have added um, I've added some raised beds this year um, for cut flowers um, here's the other cryptomeria right here that's just a rose of Sharon right there but this stuff is all um, perennials uh, cat mint uh, perennial geranium I've got some perennial mums in here. I've got some hydrangeas in here. Um, so obviously, you know, the hydrangeas, yeah, you know, you're going to still have the bark, but everything else basically is um, going to die back to the ground when I cut it back. So right here is a new little pine, um, Pinus heldrecki, um, Schmidty Bostonian pine, Bosnian pine, sorry. Um, zones 5, full sun, uh, gets 16 to 24 inches, and um, I, I'm really trying to add evergreen interest around. This really stays small, only like one by one. Um, so that's the new one right here, right here in the corner, so I can get some interest there. I also added, moved, or, moved over and added some other stuff right here. I mentioned um, in a couple videos ago that I had to take down a trumpet vine that was on a bird uh, tower support to tour. Uh, this is where we moved it back here. And I have just added some other um, perennial hibiscus back here. I think they're actually being eaten. So that's, you know, winter interest from things like arbors, like bird feeders, bird towers, that kind of stuff is very effective. Now, the other thing that I have also been adding here, let me spin around right here. So I have moved my seven sun right here, Temple of Bloom. Again, that's just gonna be branching, but I have also added some right here. Let's see if we can get that down there. There we go. Um, I've added some junipers in here. Uh, I've added Juniper Chinensis Dobbs Frosted, uh, which is the one there on the left. And that's um, zone three, full sun, two feet tall, four feet wide. Um, really pretty with that, you know, like yellow green. And then the other one, actually I'm trying to remember what the name of the other one is. So let me, let me go take a look and tell you. Uh, Juniper Gold Star, 
is the other small one that's right there that I added. Um, so again, small things, things that are not going to get gigantic over time, but that will still add some winter interest. Now, right here, obviously you can see the pinky winkies are in full bloom and the viburnums are starting to get absolutely gorgeous fall color. Now, again, they're not going to have their leaves in the winter time, but the structure of the leaf canopy of, of the branching is just fabulous all winter long until we get the, the blooms in spring. So let's just walk. So the Dawn Redwood obviously is deciduous and it's going to lose its leaves, but gorgeous in the winter time. Then we have, you know, plant supports like we have right here that we can see the viburnum again beautiful structure i have no idea why it's blooming um, but the fall color is just gorgeous then over here i have a camisiparis uh, i honestly don't know what it is because it's not what i thought it was that i planted years ago but they're typically uh, these cypresses are typically zones four through eight i will be leaving up things like shenandoah grass uh, so some of my grasses I do leave up and some I actually do take down. Now I've just added a couple of new things. So this little pencil point juniper, I just added that. And these grasses do come down in the wintertime. And then I added a little Brobex tower right here. So the pencil point juniper um, is zones uh, two through eight. It's very small. It's, it's only going to get like three and a half feet tall and basically stay one foot wide. Um, and it gets, uh, it likes full sun. I'm getting a lot of shade right now from that big, those big maples um, are causing a lot of shade in the garden at this point. The Brobex Tower um, will eventually get to be like seven feet by two feet and is zone three. Um, but that's like after 10 years. So again, all of these grasses, these do get cut down in this bed. I'm also been pulling out year after year after year, I'm pulling out black eyed Susans, um, cause they get very invasive in this particular bed. They just spread like crazy. And I think I'm also going to maybe pull out some flocks things. This bed is just way, way too crowded, but again, you can see I have plant supports. So those are inter uh, those stay out all year. So I have interest from those things all year long, whether it's, you know, just plain simple black ones, whether they're decorative ones. So let's walk around the other side. So you can see that, well, the pollinators are going crazy. Look at the butterflies. Got butterflies all over. So pretty. And it's such a pleasure to see. if we can get these guys. So pretty. Let's walk around the other side and let me show you another plant. Of course, we have this arbor that we see all winter. So over here, I have a gold cone juniper. Um, and you know what? This is uh, it's a little prickly, <laughs> so I don't go rubbing my hands all over it. Um, I've covered it a few years um, where I've actually covered it over to help with uh, some winter damage. I actually still have some winter damage on the back side of it over here from last year. Um, so hopefully we'll see what happens this year with it, but um, I've had this one for a really long time. Now the gold cone juniper um, is a juniper communis, um, zone five through seven. Uh, it says it gets five feet tall. Okay, obviously way taller than that. Likes full sun, uh, tolerates deer. Um, but you can see since it's zone five to seven, I'm like, now I'm a zone six, but I was a zone five. <laughs> um, so it, it's hardy in my zone, but sometimes it does require some extra protection, especially because this area where it's planted uh, gets a lot of winter wind. So, you know, 
you really have to rely on um, knowing your own garden, what your conditions are. Now, again, I have, I have towers. The bird bath gets covered, but I have this, you know, gorgeous arbor that even when the wisteria is, you know, not in bloom, I still have, you know, a lot of interest from that. Now this year, I've actually added some uh, boxwoods into the garden. And if you follow me, you know I haven't had too many of them. So this is a new gen freedom. I don't know if you've heard other people talk about it, but it's got a high tolerance to boxwood blight um, and it's resistant to the boxwood leaf miner. Um, it's pretty fast growing. So it's a good replacement for winter gem, green beauty, um, winter green. Um, zones five through eight can get four to five feet tall and wide, but you can definitely uh, prune it to keep it in check. Now, some other things that I've added, again, we're on the back side of this bed. So I have, um, I think you've seen these before. I have a, two sprinter boxwoods, one there and another one here. I have no idea why there's such a big difference in size between this one which gets way more shade, and this one that gets the sun, I don't even understand. Maybe it's just water, a water issue. I did put in, so here is a winter gem boxwood. It's pretty sunny out here right now, so I'm not sure if you can even see the winter gem boxwood. Um, is zone five through nine, can get like four feet tall. The sprinters are zones five through nine. And um, those are usually two to four feet tall and wide. Now that Mops Mugo that I told you is totally hiding underneath there. <laughs> Does like uh, either full sun to partial, sh partial sun. Can get four feet tall, but like in 30 years. <laughs> so, but I think I need to find another location for it. Now, look at that Norway spruce. Oh my God, like I said, I don't know if that was more than eight feet tall when I planted it. The same with the Colorado blue spruce. The same with the, the um, this is a blue spruce. This is a Colorado spruce next to it, right there. And then an Abies concolor fir. So again, in this bed, I've also been adding more stuff for winter interest. So let's take a look at those. The mighty Norway spruce <laughs> can get 40 to 60 feet tall and 25 to 30 feet wide. It's hardy in zones two through seven, definitely tolerates deers, attracts birds. The birds are always flying into there, especially in the winter time and definitely loves full sun. So then right next to it, I have put in a few little other things. We have sky pencil hollies in here. And then I have a new little spruce and then we just planted a Skylands that I'm very excited about. We took out, um, if you've been watching me, you know, I took out the Rebecca herb stone that was right there because every year, even though these things, all these plants right here are tied up, the herb stone especially falls down, breaks in half. It's just too frustrating. I love it, but I had to pull it out. This one right here, we zoom it, is Henry Eilers. And the one next to it is Kareen. So, I mean, these are beautiful, but even though I have tall supports on them, um, they, they just get, you know, they really need to be tied up. So you can see here's a support on the Hellenium right here that I have. So those things are great to look at all year. So let me talk about what we've added into this bed. So the Sky Pencil Hollies, um, they like full sun, of course. Um, you know, they just really pretty foliage. They don't have any flowers. Uh, Hardy in zones five through nine, and they're sort of mod moderate growing. They get like six to eight feet tall, two to three feet wide. Um, so this is a Japanese Holly, Ilex Cornata Sky Pencil. I'm very excited about the Skylands Oriental Spruce. Um, Picea oriental, orientalis, um, Skylands, zone four, uh, can get 25 feet tall and 15 feet wide. Um, 
again, I love the, the yellow green on it. The more sun this gets, um, the better color it'll have. Like I said, I took out the herb stone Rebecca to give it some room. Obviously, it's going to be a long time before it's big enough. And I don't think I'll have to really worry any time in my lifetime about it hitting the Colorado blue spruce, which is um, ne never gets enough sun on the backside. So luckily, I don't see it from that side. I only see it from this side. <laughs> This little guy is a little Norway spruce, Picea abies bush, <laughs> zone three. Um, it is spreading. Um, it gets like two feet high, three feet wide, but it's really a dwarf. It only grows like two to four inches a year, but really beautiful little cone on it. Um, they are brown as they age, but they come out bright red. So I'm really looking forward to seeing this um, as this grows, but it's a very slow growing uh, globe type um, spruce, Norway. Now, the Colorado spruces um, are basically zones, you know, two through seven. They can get 30 to 60 feet tall. Like I said, I bought these seven years ago, and they were maybe six feet tall at the time. Um, they get like 10 to 20 feet wide. They don't flower, um, but they're great winter interest, which is the whole point. They tolerate rabbits and deer. Um, so I have a blue spruce and a Colorado spruce here. And look at the gorgeous oak leaf hydrangeas. The color is going to start turning and it's going to be gorgeous along with the sedum, which is so pretty. Um, this grass right here will come down. This grass right here, this zebra grass will stay up. It's tied. Uh, there is a tower under it um, that we can... Um, always see if that's, you know, if we decide to take it down. The Carl Foster grass, that does come down. So a few of them, but I have interest, of course, also from the Barbary and stuff. And then this is a fur, Abies concolor. I love it. Um, when you rub your hands um, on the needles, it smells like orange. It's very cool. Now the Abies concolor is, a, like I said, a white fur. Um, obviously an evergreen. Zones three through seven gets 40 to 70 feet tall, 20 to 30 feet wide. Um, full sun to part shade, great for winter interest. And then in front of it, I have, again, this grass is going to come down here. And this is a calicarpa, which soon will be completely covered in purple berries. Great fall interest, but this is, we're talking winter interest right now. So we've got some more camisipris over here. This is lemon thread. Now these are zone four through eight. Um, I see people let these get super tall. I keep mine cut back. I don't want something that's 10 feet tall. Supposedly they only get like three to five feet tall, two to four feet wide, but you can see right there that that's not the case. Um, great for winter interest because you have that yellow green, which is nice. Now here's the red bud that I talked about that I just planted. This is a flamethrower redbud. So we just planted that, and I just put in this Athuya Linesville right here, right there. So I've just added an evergreen to this bed um, right behind the um, hydrangea that's there. And I pulled out some black-eyed Susans and some daylilies and gave those to a friend. So uh, in an effort to add some more evergreens, I pulled out daylilies and black-eyed Susans here. This is a Thuya occidentalis. Linesville is the um, variety. Um, very different foliage from your usual um, Eastern arborvitaes. Very soft, fine needles with, that have a nice feathery appearance. It forms a really nice, compact sage green ball. No pruning or shearing necessary. Um, avoid wet or poorly drained areas. Gets like two to three feet tall and wide, zones three through seven. Um, and really likes, you know, full sun for the most part. Very slow growth rate. Um, but sun to part shade, but kind of that blue color. So right next to the greenhouse, I have North Wind's grass right there, two of them. And those will probably stay up this winter. Now on this side of the greenhouse, I have another chemiciparous right here. And then the only other thing that's actually in this bed for evergreen interest is a small pine. It's called Sarah Rachel. 
it stays very small. Everything else in here is deciduous. Obviously the grasses, the hydrangeas, the irises, uh, the cone flowers, and that wickstromia is also deciduous. Same with these nine barks. But they're backed by gorgeous maple trees. And those are gonna turn a gorgeous color. So let's walk back this way and see what else we have. Service berry right here, which will have berries on it. I have uh, the clethora with great branching structure. Um, and even though, again, that's deciduous, um, it's gorgeous covered in ice. Another one of the new gen boxwoods. And in this bed, I've been adding hellebores for winter interest. And of course we have we have our bird tower, which needs to be straightened. But I love this. I absolutely love this one. Now in this bed here for winter interest, I have two hawthorns. They have beautiful bark. They get gorgeous berries and the berries hold for a pretty long time. The robins don't start going crazy on them till really late winter. Um, I have some grasses in here. Um, most of this stuff is deciduous. I think all of this stuff actually is deciduous in this bed, except for the tater tot arbs right here. I have three of them in this bed. They're kind of getting buried. <gasps> Again, one of those things where, like, be careful what you wish for, because some of these things are almost, oh, there's one back there. But, yeah, the tater tot arbs. Um... From proven winners only get one to two feet tall oh sorry bees attacking me uh, zones three through seven and then right around the corner here i have a brandywine viburnum uh, two of them actually they get really pretty berries on them and those are zone five through nine and they get like five to six feet tall and wide I really haven't had to prune those. And I have a clethora right there behind it and a different one. Um, and again, those look great with um, ice on them because <laughs> I'm sure we're gonna have ice. So let's walk around and try and walk to the other side of the garden. Um, let me walk up here. I've got roses and containers got some david austin roses and containers so in this bed over here i have more french pussy willows and i have a red twig dogwood right there um i do have some that you can't see at all because these elephant ears are humongous i do have some um azaleas in here and oh my god that spirea has gotten gigantic holy mackerel um so along the back there, I have three uh, French pussy willows, and right there in the middle, I have a red twig dogwood. So I have some winter interest in this bed also. Again, I have the plant supports that I use all over that you guys ask me about all the time. I have some black-eyed Susans right here. And then swinging back around, you can see the hawthorn bed here. And like I said, there's a clethora. And then you just saw me plant this bed. So we have a weeping spruce, Norway spruce, and we have a mini twist pine. So you should have seen me do that just the other day. There's the other ilex steeds. Those are all lilacs and nine barks over here. So in this bed, right next to the driveway, I have a Picea abies hillside upright. Uh, zone three to seven can get 20 feet tall and four to eight feet wide. Again, great evergreen interest. And then on either side of it, I have a Serbian spruce. Those have definitely gotten bigger over the year, over the years that I've had them. So these are Picea omoraca, Nana, uh, zone four through seven can get eight by eight. So pretty good size. I have three of them, two in this bed and one in another bed, but they have grown considerably since I've, uh, since I've had them. Um, this is my annual bed. You can see my zinnias in here. And then going around 
the side over here, you can see the my salix. Um, great branching structure, a little out of control. Same with the apple. Um, this is a sergeant crab apple. Again, great structure. Um, it has the berries. Um, but I have, for winter interest, I have this arbor right here. That's got wisteria on it, and I've got little gates that I've, you know, uh, found at Brimfield. And uh, so I have things that I can look at. Also in this bed right here, I have a forsythia called Show Off from Proven Winners, zone five through eight, can get, you know, five or six feet tall. I had it in a different place. It wasn't growing, so I moved it out here and it seems to finally be putting on some size. Um, it's right next to this other Serbian spruce. Again, like I said, these were probably half this size when I put them in like six years ago. So the wind is picking up a little bit. So I'm gonna try and go a little bit quicker here. So, so this is a columnar Norway spruce, um, Pisces, Picea abies uh, cupressina. And this can get 25 to 30 feet tall and six to eight feet wide. I feel like it's getting a little tall and a little too wide. I'm gonna have to do a little bit of work on it, I think. So I walked right by um, without just a reminder. I took out, uh, the catmint that was on the right hand side of the walk. These are all walkers low on the left. And this is little lime hydrangea. Um, and I put in Gembox holly. So these get, you know, like two to three feet tall and wide, zone five, um, because I was having trouble the last couple of years with some of my Nepeta catmint. Um, not sure why, I've actually cut uh, some of these back a couple of times this year now. So we'll, we'll just, um, we'll see. So far, the hollies are doing really well and I'm really glad that I, a little more formal than I typically do, um, but I, I like it nevertheless. And I have some um, ink berries over there and I have some winter berries over here and I'm gonna put the uh, specs on the screen just because um, I'm, this video is probably getting way too long. Now with the winter berry hollies, you need a male and a female. So I have Red Sprite and Jim Dandy. And I can hardly walk through my garden anymore. <gasps> now this huge wall right here is um, Bailey's Red Twig Dogwood. And um, I am definitely coppicing this to the ground. It's way bigger than I ever wanted it to be. But the great thing for winter interest with the red twig dogwoods is the stems are red. They're great for cutting for holiday decorations. Um, just go every year and cut out the old brown wood because that is never gonna be red again. And the red stems are from new wood. So that's just a, a little tip for you. And then over here, I have, well, the quick fires are gorgeous at this point, absolutely gorgeous. But I have river birches. These are heritage. And the reason that you plant these, well, besides water, is it's got the most gorgeous exfoliating bark. It is so beautiful. Very, it's like white, cinnamon white. It, it is so pretty. Let me see if I can get back a little bit from it. Let me get down the path here a little bit with the, you can see all the nine barks here. And the Salix, Hakura Nishiki. So hopefully, without killing myself here, you can see the river birches. Obviously they can get very, very tall. Um, I also have on the other side a live, river birch Little King. So this river birch, Betula Nigra Kuli, heritage can get 70 feet tall 60 feet wide zone four through seven and obviously i have it planted because i have a lot of water runoff and they love water so the other things in this bed i've actually this is the bed i've added the most to so i just pulled out a very large uh persicaria some burnet which is spreading all over and i've added a few things so a picea bluebird so a little pine this juniper, old gold, was in a pot. 
underneath the river birches and I've now put it in the ground. I've added a midnight wagelia. That's not a winter interest, obviously. And then another winter interest is this uh, Hinoki cypress Caraldo. So that's gonna get like four feet wide. This is gonna get four feet wide, the bluebird. And the um, juniper can get like, oh my gosh, I think it can get eight feet. And I think it's gonna get much taller. So I wanted to finally put it in a place where it can really spread its wings. But I've got things that are, um, this bed has me a little annoyed. Um, you know, once the daylilies are gone, I feel like there's not a lot to look at because this bed is lined with lilacs, which obviously are not in bloom now. Um, they're not in bloom in the winter. I have a, an iris, a white iris that has taken over a daylily completely here. Um, and I have a lot of wild violets and they're just destroying some of the daylilies that are here. Um, so let's walk down. And this is the bed I showed you that we just added a couple weeks ago. So here's the Ilex Steeds that was always there. Here's the Weeping Spruce. There's the Mini Twist Pine. I absolutely love that thing. I even put it in at a client's. I've got Dahlias all over and I still have some Cleomies. I've got some Boxwoods also hiding down in there. And then there's the Hawthorns. So I hope this was interesting. And lastly, this bed right here has some boxwoods. Uh, I don't remember what they are. Um, I don't know if I ever knew. I think they're just a common boxwood. And then this is a Little King River Birch. Love it. Again, with the exfoliating bark, it's absolutely beautiful in the winter time. Not sure. I think even now you can probably see this. It's just absolutely beautiful. So these are things to consider. You know, if you live in a cold climate, you want things that you can actually enjoy even in the winter time, even if you're not out uh, in your garden. I thought I'd end this video by just giving you a close up again of some of the plant supports that I have. Um, I buy them from Old Farm Nursery in Lakeville, Connecticut. People ask me that all the time. I don't think that they actually um, ship anything. But if you live near me, head on up there, whether it's towers, whether it's arbors, whether it's things like this. Um, most all of my tall plants do have some supports. And then of course I have arbors here. I have them in the back. Um, so again, something to look at. This little blackberry lily is putting on, starting to get its blackberry, blackberries. <laughs> also, don't forget um, in our Amazon store, I have linked the um, plant marker tags that we use, these metal tags. Um, I use a laminated um, label um, from P-Touch that I use and they go right in the ground. They go year after year. I did a quick uh, story on them. Um, I have had them for years and I say thank you very much to a daylily friend. I went to uh, his garden and I was like, oh my God, how do you get labels that don't wear off? Because as good as that garden marker is, it doesn't last from year to year to year to year. And you know, I hear people say that they don't want plant tags all over. But I have different events held in my garden and I can't be with every single person um, every single time somebody's like, what is that plant? This way they know I try to push them down into the ground as much as possible, you know, before the frost. Um, but this way things are easily identifiable. Also, if I say to my husband, uh, go over to that Agastache, he'll be like, what the heck is an Agastache? So, um, it's helpful as far as, uh, you know, sending my husband out to do tasks. So, and again, again, those are in our Amazon, linked in our Amazon store below. Um, and we do get um, a small commission from that. So I hope you'll um, go check them out and try them out. I love them. I should also mention that I am going to start cutting things back. So if we do another garden tour, you're going to see 
Um, I, I am going to start cutting things back. Obviously, this is a very big garden. We can't suddenly, you know, at the end of October, start quickly cutting everything down, even though we do use a trimmer. Um, and that's made our lives much simpler. But there's a lot of work to get the garden cleaned up. Um, I, I'm not a big proponent of leaving stuff laying in the beds uh, just because of we have, you know, a lot of a lot of issues with voles and moles and rabbits here, and I'm not looking to give them any more cover than I have to. Um, you know, it, it's all well and good, uh, beneficial, uh, you know, insects and that kind of stuff. There's enough in the woods around here to support all of that stuff. So, um, you know, just where I'm coming from um, at this point, and I just thought I would, you know give you that piece of information that we are going to start cutting things back. You know, baptisias really don't provide any fall color. We don't cut back Russian sage. We do cut back black eyed Susans when they're finished. We will cut back, you know, these alliums. We will cut back the catmint, you know, all the day lilies. There's a lot of cleanup that needs to be done. And as one person, I can only do so much. So again, thank you so much for watching. Uh, I hope you found this interesting. If you haven't started thinking about winter interest, it's not too late. Uh, a lot of the garden centers and nurseries um, have a lot of uh, plants out at this time of year. You can still plant trees, you can still plant shrubs. Just be mindful of your zone. And I'll see you in the next video.